You've probably never heard of the Daily Cross of Christ because it destroys the doctrine of free will. Now, how can that be stated like that? You're probably thinking, I've seen a lot of crosses in their churches and people wear them from their necklaces or they hang them from their rearview mirrors and they say they're Christians. That is not a Daily Cross. Let's look at what the Bible says. In Luke 9.23, the scripture says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Let's start with, if any man will come after me. Isaiah 64 and 7 says, And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. Now this word stirreth up in the Hebrew is the word ur. It means to wake oneself up. In Ephesians, the second chapter, the first verse reads, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. This word quickened in the Greek is the word zoopoieo, and it means to make alive or give life. So only by the will of God do we get the ability to come alive, not of our own free will. In John 6.65, Jesus says, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. Again, let's go to verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now this word draw in the Greek is the word helko, and, and it means to drag in. If we are of his predestinated elect, then we are able to hear his word. But the fleshly man is described in 1 Corinthians 2.14. And this says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The Bible says in Matthew 7 and 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. All these verses kind of shoot the heck out of whosoever will, don't they? Let's move on. Let him deny himself. The word deny in the Greek is the word aparneomai, which means to utterly deny or contradict oneself. How and why would we do this? The scripture says we have to be spiritually birthed. In John 3 and 3, Jesus says, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In the fifth verse, he says, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now John 7.38 reads, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. As you can see again, we have to be birthed spiritually by the Holy Spirit to be allowed to come near Jesus. And this is because of the foreknowledge and sovereignty of God. Let's go back to why we would do this. Romans, the third chapter, verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth, 
There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. We have no ability to bring ourselves alive spiritually, do we? So we have to be born again. The Greek word for again is anothen, which means from above. God is the one that has to birth us by the Holy Spirit. All this flesh wants to do is seek the world and all that's in it. What is in the world? 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now let's go back to and take up his cross daily. What are crosses for? Dying, of course. On our part, we have to mortify this flesh or kill off self in our lives. Can we do this without Jesus? No. We have no ability to do this whatsoever. And why would we? Follow me is the next part. The Greek word is akolutheo. It means to be in the same way with. Again, let's go back to Matthew 7 and 14, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Narrow is the Greek word philebo. This word means to be pressed upon or afflicted. True Christianity is a hard walk in this world. Let's look at something at this point that deserves special attention. Deny, take, and follow are all imperative mood in the Greek. This means that these are commands. They have the same force in the Greek as the Ten Commandments do in the Hebrew. Now let's go back to Luke 9 and verse 24 says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. In Luke fourteen twenty seven, Jesus states, and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. This is a second witness to Luke 9.23. Pretty much cut and dry, isn't it? If we don't bear our cross, there is no crown of life. Next, we'll go to John 8. And let's go start reading here in verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. The point Jesus is making here is continuing in his word. He is only going to allow us to continue in his word if we are obedient and are bearing fruit. This leads right into John, the 15th chapter. And let's start reading here in the first verse. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 8. 
Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. This verifies Luke 9.23 again and brings to the forefront what a mature believer should be shooting for, and that is bearing spiritual fruit. To glorify God should be the highest honor that a real Christian could ever hope to attain. Yet we can do nothing without Jesus. Also without Jesus, we are the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction as stated in Romans the ninth chapter. This is why predestination, election, and the sovereignty of God are so important and really our only hope of salvation. In Philippians 3 and 3, the scripture says, We are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Do you believe that the Almighty, Holy Lord God is going to allow any sin around him in heaven? You have either been led astray or are fooling yourself if you believe this. We have to conform to his image, is what Romans 8 and 29 says. To do this, first we have to be his disciple continue in his word, and then bear spiritual fruit. The traditions of men cannot possibly bring about holiness or righteousness. In fact, they lead men away from God's truth, which is his word. This is just the beginning of learning what a true disciple of Christ has to go through in the narrow way.